G'day guys and welcome back to Ados the Great YouTube channel. Right guys, so I literally just finished work. I raced home so I can do this review. I know it's a little bit late today, but I got called into work relatively late tonight. So uh, yeah, watch the game at work. So hopefully um, everything I've got written down here, you guys can somewhat agree with and understand. But uh, yeah, before we jump into this one, guys, hit that like button and subscribe. Super excited to talk about today's game. But wow, what a game from the Kummels. Let's break down everything that happened. I thought the first 20 minutes was relatively scrappy with a lot of ill-discipline from both sides. The first 11 minutes saw Papua New Guinea completing at under 50%. Fiji weren't that much better. To the Kummels credit though, once uh, Epape scooted over for the first try, not only did momentum shift towards Papua New Guinea, but a shift flicked for Papua New Guinea, who went like 20 to 25 minutes, completing at 100%. Buller, I thought, was quite strong defensively early for Fiji. Saved a certain Reese Martin try, batting the ball, batting the ball dead, but they couldn't quite but they couldn't keep the Kummels out. Some great ball movement from Alex Johnston to Reese Martin. Set up Robert Derby in the corner. Papua New Guinea go up 12 points to nil. Moral discipline from Fiji as they gave away another penalty that led to another Robert Derby try. Got himself a double. Beautiful hands by Alex Johnston. This put Papua New Guinea up 18 nil. Once again, poor discipline leads to a penalty in front of the posts to Papua New Guinea that take the two to go up 20 nil. You'd think Fiji wouldn't let in another try before half time, but you'd be wrong. After a break from Zach, Zach Laybutt leads to a brilliant try from Alex Johnston. AJ is on fire today. Kummels go into the break leading 26 nil. Crazy stuff. Righto guys, let's talk second half. A pretty unfortunate start for Fiji as Brendan Wakeham knocks the ball on from the kickoff. In his defense, it was a pretty tough ball to catch, but he really should have grabbed it. Fiji do well. Uh, Fiji did well in that set to hold Papua New Guinea out. To the other end of the field we go, and Brendan Wakeham makes up for a poor mistake with a brilliant little grabber kick that goes over about three or four people and into the hands of Wonga Blake for his first try of the night. 26 to 6 lead for Papua New Guinea. Fiji challenge a call of a strip from Tane Milne. I would have challenged that as well, as in real time it looked like a loose carry. However, you can clearly see Tane Milne does attempt to rake the ball out, which costs Fiji not only a penalty, but a, a loss of the challenge as well. Uh, with Papua New Guinea in good field position, will they be able to capitalize on this? The answer was no, as Reese Martin make, made an error turning the ball over to Fiji. Now, I do think the, uh, Papua New Guinea should have challenged this. I believe this was a strip as well. Could be wrong, but uh, that's just what I saw. I've then written, here come Fiji. Mike Sivo looks to have scored their second try. But hang on, Roderick Tai has saved the try. Sivo knocks the ball on and possession returns to Papua New Guinea. The game had really dropped in quality at this point with a lot of ill-discipline returning. Great defense though from Roderick Ty to save that try. Both sides starting to give away too many penalties and errors in the second half. Game once again has become scrappy. Fiji then capitalized on, oh sorry, where are we up to? Both, uh, so Fiji conceded two quick penalties in the space of about two minutes. That This discipline is not good. However, they do enough to keep Papua New Guinea out. Good defense there from Fiji. A scuffle erupts behind the trial line and we see a punch thrown by Papua New Guinea forward uh, Capinius after the sit, which led to a sin bin. After the sin bin, we see a stat stating Papua New Guinea completing again at 50% in the second half. Simply not good enough. Fiji then capitalize on the player in the bin as Wonga Blake crosses for his second try of the night. It was a good try too. He beat about two, uh, three or four people. Great stuff there from Wonga Blake. Uh, Papua New Guinea still in the lead at 26 to 12. A brain snap from Tane Mill causes him to be sin bin. Basically sent off because it was under 10 minutes to go. 
Not long after, Edwin Mbappe sets up Cap Capinius for a try. Not long after his return to the field, 32-12 for Papua New Guinea. And that wrapped up the game with Papua New Guinea winning the Pacific Bowl 32-12. Here are my th final thoughts of the game. Glimpses of brilliance from Papua New Guinea, but a relatively poor performance from both sides. Papua New Guinea were by far the better side, especially for a 20-minute period in the first half. They lack discipline when a puppy goes off. You could see that with an influx of errors and penalties. Fiji were terrible today. I'm sorry, Fiji fans, just being honest. Way too many missed tackles and penalties. They needed Kamikamika to stand up and pull their heads in. Unfortunately, after a great performance last week, they dished up this type of performance when it mattered most. Now, the match stats. Fiji were actually quite even with Papua New Guinea in most of the stats. They even led some, which shocked me. Fiji had 48% of the possession, Papua New Guinea with 52. Papua New Guinea completed at 72%, Fiji following close behind with 70%, poor by both sides. This next stat shocked me. As uh, Sorry, this next stat shocked me as to how close it was. Papua New Guinea had 1,444 run meters. Fiji were only 36 meters behind with 1408. Very, very good stuff there. Uh, Fiji led the way in tackles with 262 to Papua New Guinea, 255. And the big one, Fiji dominated offloads with eight more than Papua New Guinea. However, Papua New Guinea um, dominated the tackle breaks breaking more than uh, breaking 26 more tackles than Fiji. The discipline stats were the issue. Papua New Guinea leading the way in errors with 15 to 12. Missed tackles haunted Fiji. They missed 40, where Papua New Guinea missed only 16. Huge difference. The final discipline stat is, uh, that we'll look at is penalties. Disappointing night for Fiji in this one with a massive 11 penalties conceded to just four from Papua New Guinea. Now let's close off the video guys by looking at three of the best players from each side. So for Fiji, I thought it was a relatively good captain's knock from Tui Kamikamika. I thought the wall for the most part, Fiji were ill-disciplined. He did try his heart out, um, finishing with 108 meters, 47 post contact meters, one offload, 37 tackles, only two miss. Definitely not a bad knock. Jareem Buller was solid once again. I thought he was fairly strong defensively, not so much in tackling, but for his positioning for the most part. He was throwing a lot at the Papua New Guinea in attack as well. Sorry, he was throwing a lot at Papua New Guinea in attack as well. 161 meters, four tackle breaks, a line break, line break assist, and a try assist. Very good night once again for Jareem Buller. Finally, he might get a lot of crap, but I thought Wonga Blake was solid today. Scored a double, ran for 74 meters, three tackle breaks, a line break, as well as 13 tackles. Pretty good game for him. For Papua New Guinea, geez, it was hard to only pick three for the Kumuls, but for me, these three were the standouts. However, I would like to throw in an honorable mention to Alex Johnston. Pretty great game from AJ. Definitely deserved a shout out in my opinion. All right, so my three for Papua New Guinea, starting with number three, Robert Derby. Definitely deserved to be one of these three. Scored a double, ran for 122 metres, 44 of which were post-contact metres. He had four tackle breaks and a couple of line breaks. The next player, despite the sim bin, I thought forward Appel Cap Capinius. I'm going to get that right one day. Like, I know I'm pronouncing that right in Capinius. I believe I am. Or Cap Capinius. I'm sure it's Capinius. Let me know in the comments. Um, Capinius was quite good. Scored a try. Ran for 66 metres. 22 of them were post-contact metres. And here's the really good stat. He made 22 tackles with no misses. And also had three tackle breaks and a line break. Really, really good stats there for Capinius. But my man of the match had to be Edwin Ipape. He was not only good statistically, but far out. They fell in a heap when he had a break. When he was off, the errors and penalties started coming back into their game. He is such a great game manager. He finished with these stats in under 60 minutes. One try, one try assist, 102 meters, seven tackle breaks, one line break, and 18 tackles. 
Such a great game from the number nine. All right, guys, that is pretty much going to wrap it up for this review. Let me know your take on the game. Who are your top three players? Who is your man of the match? I'd love to hear from you guys. Thank you all so much for tuning in. And as always, my friends, I will see you in the next one. Thanks, guys. Thank <laughs> you.